How is the market looking, Nilesh, to you now? Because there's been so much turmoil globally over the last few weeks about, uh, you know, first with Silicon Valley Bank and then with Credit Suisse and now there is talk of Deutsche Bank being in some kind of uh, trouble, at least that's what the stock market there is indicating. Uh, what's the end game of this? I, I mean, everybody has noted that this is not 2008, regulators are aware of the risks and they're moving in a certain way. But, you know, do you see this ending in an episode of a bad accident or something like that, which makes 2023 a very poor year for equities again? Well, there, there is certainly a lot more um, turmoil in the global marketplace um, and in global financial markets and, and a lot more than what one could have imagined. Um, I mean, I'm quite sure at the start of the year, we never thought that there could be bankruptcies along the way, um, especially of banks. Uh, but the challenge in terms of the, of the US Fed hiking interest rates, uh, that has spilled over to the banking system. Um, I think is, 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 is a bit abrupt, it's been a bit sudden um, and it surely has huge ramifications. I think what matters in the financial markets is, 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 is stability matters a lot more um, and that's essentially getting kind of, uh, the, the boat is getting rocked right now. So clearly from a global sentiment point of view, um, I think things, things, things aren't looking great. Um, and I suspect that this will probably go on for a few months and it could pretty much um, you know, it has already taken center stage and it could pretty much uh, hog the limelight and impact sentiment for pretty much maybe another one to two quarters at least. We are already about 10% off, uh, our own markets are off about 10% from the recent highs. And it's quite possible that with the way the global markets are positioned and, and the way a risk of trade could further accelerate from here on, it's quite possible that we could probably correct another maybe 5 to 10 percent, which could pretty much take us to the lows of 2022 in June last year. Uh, we had gone to about the 15,000 plus on the Nifty, and I wouldn't be surprised if those levels were to kind of uh, get get uh, revisited. Um, so yes, uh, it, it's going to be a lot more somber year, a softer year. It's going to probably be a year, at least for most part, which is going to kind of uh, look negative. Uh, but it, it's quite possible that maybe towards the end of the calendar year, we probably could we could reclaim a lot of the lost ground, especially if things don't turn out to be too bad or the US Fed decides not to hike rates further. If our own uh, policymakers here decide to not hike rates further, uh, then again, it's quite possible that the markets could state some recovery towards the year end. But it, it looks like that it's going to get a little more worse from here before it starts to kind of look better. If the market were really to get down to those nifty levels of 15,000, uh, what's the best way to position yourself now, Nilesh? Uh, do you think mid caps and small caps will get hurt more than large caps? Because they've already underperformed quite significantly. Do you see under, the underperformance there getting even more aggravated if the market falls another 10% from here? And conversely, you know, the high quality, very expensive stocks, you know, all those Asian pains and Bajaj finances of the world, they, had, they have underperformed very significantly over the last one year or more. Do you think that style of investing can come back into vogue again uh, as people seek hiding places? Well, uh, the high P space, um, I, I think, is, is set for an extended period of underperformance. Um, that's the space which I think, um, you know, investors are already beginning to question whether you need to be assigning uh, those lofty multiples of 60, 70, 80 times for businesses which probably still are kind of growing at about 10-15%. Um, if you were to kind of look at any of these names which have been quoting at these premium valuations and their growth rates over the last 5 years, over the last 10 years have probably at best been about, uh, at best been about in, in the mid-teens in a best case scenario. So I clearly believe that's the space which is going to get, get challenged. In the intervening period, uh, the mid and the small caps could face a bit more brunt um, and that's purely because uh, of the risk of trade accelerating and when there is risk aversion, you clearly see uh, the mid and the small caps to kind of underperform a bit the way they have underperformed over the last maybe few quarters. But having said that, um, they are probably getting into a zone of undervaluation where probably valuations have already become reasonable, they probably could 
could become a lot more reasonable with uh, uh, another 5 to 10 percent correction. And I do expect that by the end of the year and, and starting of next year, um, the markets to again go back into risk on. And once that happens, mid to small caps will outperform and outperform quite significantly. Uh, that's the nature of the beast. We've seen these kind of cycles earlier, uh, be it 2018, be it 2013, be it 2008, where mid to small caps did face the brunt. But post that, uh, for the next two or three years after that, um, clearly mid caps and small caps did outperform and outperform by a huge margin. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if a similar cycle repeats itself, especially if interest rates peak out and interest starts to kind of start to kind of um, uh, be cut again. Uh, my sense is mid to small caps will start to do well. In addition to that, uh, an interesting pocket of the economy, which is the infrastructure space, the capital goods, CAPEX, engineering products, that's the space which is witnessing better earnings growth. And you find a whole bunch of them in the mid to small cap space. Um, and that could provide strong leadership, especially to the mid to small cap space. So I clearly see money moving out and continuing to move out from high P to more reasonable P. Uh, and then later on from the end of this year or maybe sometime next year onwards, money move out from large caps to more of the mid to small caps. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.